um, well, the, the company was in a very difficult situation in the last uh, couple of years. You know, Pina died in 2009 as well as, as uh, Merce did. And in the 10, 11 years that uh, have passed, uh, there was almost no time to really uh, reflect on what, where do we want to go with this work? What do we want to do, to do with, with the, all these pieces, these over 40 productions that Pina left? And um, so um, when I joined in 2019 uh, and became the director, there was a pretty difficult and um, diverse situation in uh, how to handle the heritage of, of Pina Bausch. Um, either do it the way everybody did it in the company because they had to, they had to keep going, they had to do the performances, they had to tour uh, to make the money, to keep the, the company going, get the dancers paid and everything. So there was not so much time to ask uh, oneself, well, is it worth doing it? How is it going to be done? What is the best way? Where can we get experience from other people who have done things like that already, who know maybe better than we do how to handle something? What is heritage? What are we dealing with? Mm -hmm. um, so when I came, I had all these questions and because of um, my, um, my work in this um, fund that uh, the, the culture, the foundation of in the, in the German, um, the government um, founded the, the Kulturstiftung des Bundes. Um, they had this fond heritage. Mm. Uh, I think it was, it's, it's about 10 years ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so there was a, a, a discussion in the society going on in every, in all these areas that dance had to deal with. Um, what is heritage? What are we doing with it? Are, are all the pieces just lost when they're not performed anymore? Uh, do we have the obligation to keep some of them alive? How do we decide what should be kept alive and how do we do it? I mean, of course, we have video and film material now, uh, mm -hmm. other than the, the classical heritage that had to be kept going from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And so all these questions were were in a way questions that I asked myself when I took over because I thought uh, I had this, um, I was hired in a way to be something like a, a link between these 10 years and the future. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had this, um, this task in a way to think about these things. How do we want to go into the future with this company, with this heritage, together with the foundation? I'm not the head of the foundation, you know, Salomon Bausch, son of Pina is the, the head of the foundation that she wanted to be founded actually and um, so we have to work together on this and I think these are questions that probably Trevor knows very well and, um, and is familiar with through the work that he that he has been doing the last 10 years as well. And just one question so the company is still at this very moment performing all the 40 pieces or no. has there been a cut already? I mean, they are all here and they, we can, of course, um, choose whatever we want. But uh, this is one of the questions to choose. Mm, oh, what to do choose. We choose which pieces? Mm. And this is a very uh, close conversation with Salomon Bausch as well and with uh, specialists from all over the world. You know, he has, um, he has this, this um, boards of uh, different people from, uh, from other theaters who have dealt with Pina for a long time, um, who give their... Uh, advice and their knowledge into this discussion and we we are, there there are a lot there's a, a, a whole series of questions that we are trying to deal with in, and have been trying to deal with in the last 14 15 16 months mm -hmm. um, this is one of, of 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 the questions which pieces to keep and maybe mm -hmm. which pieces to put aside not to to take out or something and say okay we never uh, perform them in them again but um, yeah to understand what is good for the for the public now which pieces are of certain reasons not the ones that should be performed at the moment um, and this is our things that we that we think about together and and decide together if possible and of course there are always um, uh, reasons um, that that are that are not dramaturgic reasons because we're going on tour and the people want a certain piece so we do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and of course we do it also in, in Wuppertal and but we more and more try to decide ourselves what we want to perform and which is which are the pieces who are good, which are good and which we want to be on, bring back on stage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty much what you what you have to face too uh, Trevor. 
Yeah, Trevor. Thank you, Bettina. Mm. Trevor, what is the, where are we with the Cunningham? Um, well, first, may I say thank you so much for including me in the conversation. And also, um, it's so nice to be talking together. I remember 10 years ago, within the same month, both Pina mm. and Merce passed, and um, in some ways we were pinned against each other um, as to what was going to happen with these artists' works. And I think that um, uh, there was a lot of conversation and discussion around the two groups, and we never really ever had an opportunity to talk to each other. And so it's really quite exciting. Sorry? We did, actually. Remember? We were in Berlin. You Never? You and I, yes, yes, indeed. But at the time of their passing, there was this uh, almost a tension, so to say, on um, what was happening. And yeah, um, so I, um, I think our situations really uh, reflect the artists whose work we're supporting and the types of. of creators they were and the types of people they were. Our situation um, was so very different. Um, perhaps I, um, well, I certainly see it differently. I was um, starting uh, to work with Merce and, and at a really uh, low level, I was, one, I was the company manager. And so over a short period of time, I got to see quite a lot. And one of the things that I observed was um, Merce himself uh, aging quite rapidly and realizing that there, um, that this wasn't going to last forever. Um, something very different than what Pina's company was facing because she was quite um, uh, a surprise uh, when, when her death was announced. Um, whereas it was not as much a surprise, Merce having just turned 90, um, his passing. Um, the advantage I think um, I had or we had in a certain sense was to be able to ask these questions that Bettina is asking um, now um, and we got to ask them in Merce's lifetime and one of the reasons mm -hmm. we were able to do that was because I think um, when I became the executive director and the board of directors asked me to make a plan for the future um, I in a naive sense um, didn't uh, understand that they were looking for the traditional three-year plan from an executive director, but rather I assumed they wanted to know what we were going to do when Merce wasn't alive any longer. And so I went down this path and, um, and in doing so um, had some examples uh, that were close to Merce. One having been John Cage, the, mm -hmm. his partner and, and, and primary composer throughout his lifetime, his having passed uh, about uh, 15 years prior, but also the passing of Martha Graham. And they handled their situation in, I would say what's sort of considered in America to have been a traditional way. Um, unfortunately, it, it, there was a bit of tragedy involved perhaps not unlike Martha's own work, but there was this tragedy in that um, the person who inherited the, her the heritage of Martha Graham um, was not in the, in, in the same place as the people running the company and the dancers. And so there was a bit of angst there. And so we had those two examples and um, wanting to avoid um, that, uh, in a certain sense from happening with Merce, I was able to um, create a kind of questionnaire that we had an independent outside agency conduct with around 50 people who were somewhere, in some way connected to Merce and his work, former collaborators, former dancers, presenters, government agencies supporting the work, former board members, et cetera. And so, we were really able to get a, a kind of, for us, what seemed global at the time, picture of what people thought was important about maintaining Merce's work on into the future. And what we discovered was that um, people um, saw 
that um, uh, without MERS, what would there be going forward apart from the heritage? In other words, it didn't seem um, that uh, maintaining a company in his name, for example, was a priority in as much as preserving his legacy in a way whereby perhaps repertory companies could continue to perform the work. And for us, fortunately, Merce was quite clear about that, that he considered his dance company a laboratory and, um, and that if he were not there working in the laboratory, then what sense would there be in having a laboratory? I'm paraphrasing totally, but I feel comfortable mm -hmm. doing so. <laughs> which is, which is it, it, interesting how, um, what, do you, what do you say about this laboratory and, and the experiment and... Uh, it's exactly if an, if a scientist doesn't work in his lab anymore, someone else does another experiment, but this is not continued. So it's also the question about heritage and, uh, and also the question that, that Bettina has to ask now her, herself. I find it, what, uh, Bettina, what do you think about, I think it's a, what an idea to ask collaborators and close followers, 50 around the world, um, what, what is the essence of the work? And then from there, uh, as I understood, Trevor, you, 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 you choose or you took the, the consequences from these questionnaire that you developed. You know, Merce was never clear. In other words, we didn't have program copy and the playbills that described what a dance was about. Um, mm -hmm. We listed collaborators' names and the name that Marissa identified the piece by and the year it was born and where it premiered. But uh, w apart from that, he was not, um, he didn't choose to describe or articulate things. He rather enjoyed observing other people's interpretations. And so that is not at all unlike what the conversations with him were about his dance company and foundation. So the questionnaire um, allowed me to consider that the dance company wouldn't continue. I, I had um, been working at this plan with the idea in mind that the goal is to keep the company running and keep the work going and consider how might there be a world premiere of a Cunningham piece if an event were rearranged, et cetera. And instead, the questionnaire gave me the kind of freedom to consider, oh, what might the world be without a Merce Cunningham dance company? And it allowed me to pose that to Merce as a question. And so the building of the legacy plan and the concepts behind the legacy plan were, um, born from Merce's own ideas, but they were shaped by me and others. And so um, this idea of having a um, digital um, uh, base uh, of the repertory that would allow the work to be either studied or presented by other companies um, was, uh, w was part of this uh, kind of three-tiered plan. The other was to give the, the dancers at that time, at the time of Merce's death, an opportunity to present the work and a farewell tour for people to get to see the work on, on his, the dancers mm -hmm. that he had chosen for the last time. And then a transition that would allow the, us the possibility of taking care not only of, of the people who'd worked with Merce and through those final years, but also a kind of transition that would allow the dance community to absorb those 50 people into, um, into uh, the workforce in a different way, uh, knowing that the foundation wouldn't be there to support them any longer. And, and the way what, what Bettina is facing now in the reverse, we have to support these dancers. How do we continue to do so, et cetera, et cetera. We, tried to lighten the load on the dance community in the United States by having this transition period that was, you know, if you included the transition as well as the tour, then you, then it was about a three-year overlap. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah sorry. And, uh, yeah, no, no, and this, this, is, a, this is a good uh, uh, point for me, the, the dancers. Uh, and I would like to, to know from Bettina or maybe uh, maybe you have another way of, 
transforming the question, Trevor, the dancers, how, what, because this is, I think, a very crucial point, Bettina, you and the dance company and these dancers, some of them have, have danced all these roles. I don't know if they are all still in the company. Um, and what, the, excuse not, me? Not from the first generation, from the 70s and the beginning of the 80s, there are, I don't know, maybe two. Two. Uh, and step by step there, but the last, 20 years, 25 years, of course, there are people. Uh, and these, well, quite... and these dancers, I mean, they have created their role, yeah. uh, which is a very personal um, thing to do. So it's... Well, no, it... I, have a, I, have a, I have a different yeah. opinion about this because uh, I think what, what Merce and, and Pina have in common, what their work has in common is that it was always considered a dance that nobody else can dance apart from the dancers who are very familiar with the style, who are very familiar with the, with the pieces, with the laboratory that, that Cunningham uh, invented and worked in together with them. So I remember that I asked Merce 20 years ago in Paris if we can have one piece for Munich because I was always, you know, I always wanted to be first to have things like that. So I went there and he said, well, okay, yeah, you hmm, would think about it. But I, I, I saw very easily that he was not really um, over, uh, um, convinced that, that it was a good idea. Uh, we were a classic, considered a classical company, although we did a lot of contemporary work all, mm -hmm. although already in that time. Pina's work was considered almost impossible to be danced by anybody except the early pieces which were very conventionally choreographed to music like the, the operas and the sacre exactly. uh, where well, you can say okay it's a certain vocabulary that people can learn and it's um, and for a dance company that is used to contemporary dance they should be able to learn it but the, mm -hmm. the dance theater pieces with these semantic levels with this all these um uh, references and this very very uh, complex network of, of uh, relations and, and mm -hmm. scenes that are connected to each other and, and, and quotations and whatever. Nobody thought that it would ever be possible. So mm -hmm. I think the first decision was do we want to keep these pieces? Do we want to keep them? Uh, do we want people to see them in the next 20, 30 years? Are they worth being kept um, alive? Uh, apart from being filmed or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, do we think they are still um, they are still contemporary in a way that they still uh, interest us? That, that people go there and not say, "Oh, it's a historical piece. I would like to see what it was like," or is it something that still can uh, yeah get a real enthusiastic uh, reaction from a public because they they love what they see because it's it has a quality that is so unquestioned and unquestionable that it has to stay in the world in a way. And these are, I think, questions that both had to, to answer. And of course, in Germany, it's easier, the question of organization, because we had this company that was a Pina Bausch company, like the Merce Cunningham company, but we had the support of the city and the government and all these, these financial things were clear. And, um, but in spite of that, there was the question and the discussion, I think when Pina died, whether to, to, uh, to close the company or go on with the company. And um, once you decide that, um, you have to also decide all these other questions. Where's the quality? Which pieces should be kept alive? How can they be kept alive? And I think it's um, in a way similar that I, I, I read about Merce's uh, work in the last couple of, of weeks. And uh, actually I made an introduction to this film that Allah uh, uh, produced, uh, a year ago, um, and he was he he t he said about the the dancers they had to be natural, they had to be themselves on stage still, which I would never have um, have thought about it because mm -hmm. I always thought his work is very artificial and very formed, very formal in the way it works in the body. Um, and for Pina, it was the same. She always wanted the people to be, still stay in a way private, to be the person you are and no, don't, don't pretend, don't perform something. And these questions are, I think, crucial and, and very basic in, the, in this uh, decision where, whether you keep this, uh, mm -hmm. this heritage or not. How can you cope with the situation? You have to decide when somebody new learns a place, is it a place? Or is it Nazareth Panadero that you have to learn? 
you know it's a difference it makes a difference if it's a place you have to think dramaturgically about the whole piece about all the relations between the different inputs that came from the dancers how you keep them and at the same time let the dancers who learn it new, the new, the, the new generations, the young generations, to still be yourself. Otherwise, you, you're doing exactly the opposite of what Pina always wanted. You, you have somebody learn a, a role that is not natural, that's not himself, that he hasn't invented, that he hasn't discovered in himself. So all these questions are, are difficult in the daily work and we we're still on the way to discuss that the last the corona actually gave us the time to get very deep into this discussion we have just started a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and um, and then on the other side you have all these practical questions you know uh, all the, pie the pieces work and we we did a Cunningham piece years ago in Munich uh, one of the my absolute favorites um, biped this long 45 a minute piece uh, with a classical company and there were dancers who felt absolutely natural in the in the vocabulary they they had it like this and they wanted to learn it and they were fabulous and others were like i can never do it i'm sorry it's it's impossible i can't i don't have this coordination i just don't know mm -hmm. how to do it and um, so these two sides i think the the artistic value of the of what we call this heritage can we really decide to never see a Cunningham piece being performed on stage again? I would cry if, if I, somebody would decide that. No matter if it's the Cunningham company or if it's a company from wherever who, who just buys the right to do it. And at the same time, I would say to have Pina's pieces only in the foundation in an archive with all the photographs, with the videotapes and everything, and not have it performed on stage anymore is just such a, it would, would be such a loss. And um, I think um, these questions that we just um, put on the table at the moment are very, very um, important. And a lot of people who watch dance, they, they don't even know, because it's, it's such a specific way of working, that dance is something um, other than opera or schauspiel, where the choreography is the original. The choreography is the text in a way. It's not the, it's not the story or something. The choreography has to be kept alive, has to be reproduced, reenacted, whatever. But this is the, the thing that, that is so difficult, that makes it so difficult. I wonder if I just may interject. Yeah. I, I, one of the reasons I, I think that this conversation is interesting is that it gives us an opportunity to um, share what we think and share what we know. And, and I think that reveals a, a considerable amount. It's sort of what happened, Petra, with you and me when we were talking, where there are certain understandings um, uh, by people about what the journey was for the Merce Cunningham Foundation to what is currently the Merce Cunningham Trust. And not all of them are based on fact. Um, with regards to repertory and Merce having other people perform his work, he, in 1958, made a dance for the New York City Ballet, which was famously performed by them and continued to be performed by our company through until his death, a piece called Summer Space. Um, he also created a new work to be performed on the Paris Opera Ballet, um, Enjeu de, which that is the only company who'd ever performed it. His company, in fact, didn't perform. And um, Chris Comar, one of his greatest dancers and, and, and rehearsal directors, started staging works on other repertory companies as early as the late 80s and 70s, um, to the tune of there being at least one Cunningham piece on a single repertory company every year. And in Merce's lifetime, he appointed one of, of the trust trustees and a role that we created for her, which is called the director of licensing. And that was all prior to Merce's death with the sole intention of staging Merce's works on other dance companies. So to say that he was not interested in seeing his work on other companies is, I think, 
pulling uh, information from one part to feed another. It's well, maybe, not maybe really it accurate. You're right. Maybe it was just in Germany because there, as I remember, there had never been a piece on stage as, as far as I know the last 35 years. Uh, it was really, I think we were really the first to present a Cunningham piece in Munich, in, in Germany. Maybe in, on other companies, that's right. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the other thing too um, is, uh, and much like all this film and other films, um, the the bulk of her film comes from the um, edited and raw material of a film made in Mercer's lifetime in the 70s. So the information that feeds and informs that film today, which is 3D and is considered really contemporary to Merce, um, really reflects, and I think she was she was correct in stating this, the early years of the company, as well the early years of Merce's thinking. And so if you go to a film like Merce Cunningham, A Lifetime of Dance by Charles Atlas, you have there too interviews with Merce in his own words, describing his work, his process, his company, in which he um, stated clearly, the steps are the steps. With regard to whether or not he supported the idea of doing revivals on his company, he was famously always actively engaged in creating a new work. And behind the scenes, it was like pulling teeth to get him to watch his dancers do something that someone else had done years before in his own company. Um, he also, uh, we have these uh, fantastic um, short webisodes, Mondays with Merce, in which we have direct and straight interviews with Merce where he's talking about his work and his work with regard to staging it on newer company members and his company and how he feels about seeing an old work being performed again, either by his company or another company. So. We have a great deal of information toward the latter end of Merce's life, which was the key for us in establishing the heritage and the key for the trustees and the executive director of the trust and understanding how to continue on into the future. And, and in fact, um, the, the centennial posed a great opportunity for, for us to stage a great number of works on other companies and engage in other activities. The current crisis has, has opened a whole new avenue for the Cunningham Trust to share Mercer's work in a way that is um, able to, to not only speak to what was important to Merce and what was integral to the formation of his work, but also what's important to dancers today. What, is, what does the Cunningham technique mean to a dancer who's able to study it intensely and, and use it not with the intention of, I hope I get this job with this Merce Cunningham fellow, but rather how does this, this movement um, allow me to move more openly and broadly to the type of dance community that we see formed today, which is not based like it had been in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s around a single artistic director and a single vision. And, 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 and it allows for, I think, this, the, the way that the trust has been able to sort of, and it's almost as though there was a break that was allowed to have happen, and there was a mourning that occurred, and there was a rebirth. And that, I think, came as a result of the foundation acknowledging that its, its founder was not there, having the same type of transition a few years later and allowing the trust to really speak to this aspect that is the heritage and, 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 and answer for themselves with the audience today, with the dancers today, with the collaborators today, with the interests today of who and what Merce Cunningham had been as a creator and artist, not just his choreography. What is it that um, we can do as an organization to help continue to support and feed that without a prior identi uh, identity? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's been it's been actually a, a, a great 
experience to have been part of and to obse have observed. Maybe I've gone off on a tangent, so I apologize. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, um, See, that's, hmm? that's different in the company. We, we put, you uh, asked this question, Petra, before about the dancers. Of course, mm -hmm. we have this, we have this company that is half original dancers in a way, original uh, in the sense of they have danced it. A lot of them have have developed the pieces together with Pina actually others have like one or two experiences together with her before she died mm -hmm. and then we have the new ones uh, who, who become more and more of course um, and it's it's about 50 to 50 and of course the discussion is also with the with these actual creators in the company because um, in Pina's work it's really like um, their experience that that got into the pieces and it's their their view of the world, the, their view of, of what love is, what truth is, all these topics that Pina had and where they were constantly um, like exchanging together in this sort of family situation that they had when she was creating for months and uh, like stuck in the in the Lichtburg and um, only thinking about this new piece and uh, and now of course um, I'm, I'm quite radical in, 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 in um, um, judging about how to go on. I think that that a dancer who is interested in learning this idiom, this this pieces, in learning the the choreography, and there's a lot of choreography. It's called dance theater, but it, it's an enormous amount of of choreographies that she has created. Fantastic, very very complex choreographies. And whenever you have a dancer when we do an audition, after three days they come and they are absolutely overwhelmed because they love this material, they love to dance it, they love to do it. And I think that is the first step to do it well on stage. And then you can do it. It's not, it's not a secret. It's not something you cannot learn. It's something you can do um, together with the, with the help of the, the first generation and the second generation, I'm sure, but also with the with a very um, with a very brave and courageous um, uh, grip to the to the work, you know, not not putting it on stage and say, "My God, it's Pina! You you can't touch mm -hmm. it. It's it has this it's this legend. It has this myths about it. You have to take it as a piece of art and then say, "Okay, what is it about? What does it exist? How does it exist? How does it work? How does how is the inner life of this piece?" And then try to make it as alive and as as authentic as possible so that the people think my god it's like it's it's been created just now you know that's so important in this work and um, because there is no style or something you can learn mm -hmm. it's, you have to be authentic you have to be courageous on stage you have to yeah like um take the piece and and you know like somehow chew it and and and, and swallow it and then spit it out again and do it you know mm -hmm. it's a very um, it's a very, um, um, very st special process and I think we have to go much more for this and not think there's a role or a person they have to learn and then, you know, to copy or, or, or yeah, you have to see how it works, see what the people d did when they first created it and then find your way into it and try to make it as contemporary and new and and your thing your cup of tea your your way of seeing it and and that's so difficult and i think um that this is that we're really lucky that uh, salomon bausch who is running the foundation has the same understanding of how this should work and also he has the same understanding of and i think he, he talked with pina about it when she first mentioned this wish of hers that she wanted him to um, to run this foundation when once she has passed away, um, that she wanted this this work to to stay alive, uh, not only in this archive material because I mean there are thousands of videos, there are thousands of diaries, of regie books, of 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 books that she that she wrote with all her remarks and everything, but. The last thing is, when you put it on stage, it doesn't help to have thousand videos. <laughs> yeah, you have to take an artistic mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. and 
is what you have to make. And right now, where we're also in this process of finding an artistic director for the next maybe five years or 10 years, even when it goes into the Pina Bausch uh, center that Wuppertal is going to, uh, to build there, um, I think it's also important to find somebody who has an artistic view on this. And it's not so easy because who in the world who works as a choreographer himself wants to take care of the heritage of another choreographer with this fame around it, with this weight, you know? But I think it's very, very important to have somebody really like take this, all these things apart, put them back together. To, to find a way through this inner life of these pieces because they are so complex and so, and they have this choreographic uh, aspect, this dance, this movement, but also this, all these people on stage, this diversity, this, um, um, this human uh, element that they, that they need so much, you know, in another, in another uh, way than, than, uh, than Mercer's pieces. They need it too, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and they have it and all this freedom that he gave to the dancers to find their own rhythm, to find their own, uh, th not to be synchron, just to be, you know, to make it a form, but to feel it, to breathe together and all this, do it without music and, and still find a, a finish at the same on the same second as the music does finally you know as we experienced with um uh, with my yeah. um, so there are i uh, love there are so love, many nice questions to to you know to to solve somehow or to to try to pose and then try to to answer or to find a way to them and to keep this enormous quality uh, alive on stage for the for the for the next generations. I think and that's the same with with Merce, possibly. I think I like I love the way that you described this, Bettina. That that there's speaking about the present really, and um, for me it was so important. And I'm I feel fortunate having discovered this soon after Merce's death, that it wasn't ever going to be fair nor accurate for me to say, oh, Merce would have loved this. And, and that's sort of one of the, the great lessons for me and, and moving ahead um, with, well, like with the centennial when we produced the Night of 100 Solos, it was nothing like anything Merce had ever done. So for, for me to ever have said, oh, we're going to do it in the style of Merce or in, it was what it was. And it was a great success. And because it was Mercer's choreography and because there were extraordinary dancers involved, both on the stage and, and from behind. And so um, it was uh, it was something of today. And that sort of uh, uh, that resonates in what Bettina's saying, that there's you we have the work, we have the choreography, we have the steps. Now what do we do with them and what do we do with them and with the people who inhabit them today? I think that that's very important that um, with both choreographers and and both of their estates, so to say, it seems we're really attempting to do a very similar thing, which is to respect what had been done and do our best to be honest about it and, and allow it to be um, shared uh, in the way that, that people um, can experience it today, which is nothing like they would have been able to experience it in the time that either artist was making it. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> There's a question now, uh, Petra. I don't know. I have to read it because it's really long. Uh, and then I would like to answer it. It's okay. Please. Is it okay that you read it out, uh, Bettina? Or shall I read it? No, I can read it. I have a question to Frau Wagner Berger. First, I want to thank everyone for the time to be here and to maintain the spaces where we can share and learn so many. Talking about the inheritance of both work, but specifically Pina's work, how you see the relation about dance and cinema, thinking cinema as a way, throw another art to persistence and keep both work accessible for everyone and the generation to come. Pina herself, Pina herself had an interesting approach between cinema and dance, not for the, forgetting her work with Wim, Wim Wenders and also thinking this in our today's context. Mm. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always ready to, 
um, to approach whatever piece of art is there and and take it and have dance have new artists contemporary artists young artists to to somehow um, work with this with this pieces of art and do something with them uh, because it does I think it doesn't um, it doesn't destroy anything in the original piece of of art. So I think to approach it through film or through other means is absolutely legal and is a, is a way to do it. And it will probably uh, give it a lot of new aspects also to the work. And that's what Pina also knew. That's why she was so um, so, so interested in, in, in doing it and filming and, and also be part of films herself, acting in, in films and everything. I think film was very important to her. Um, and of course, as a means of documentation, film is very, very um, important. And documentation, we all know that, is never just reality being filmed. It's the cuts that you make, the combinations that you make, the things you leave out, the things you mention, they make, they create a different piece of art. They create a different reality on the screen. And I think that's always uh, fantastic if you have people who can do that and who, are, who really like to do it like Wim Wenders did. I think that the Wim Wenders film would have looked totally different if Pina would have been still alive. Um, it would have been not so much uh, this kind of homage to her from everyone in the company. I don't think she would have, uh, allowed, uh, have allowed that. It would have been much more of a, of a piece maybe about the dance itself. But um, I think it was a fantastic approach that Wim Wenders did together with the dancers and also to finish it after she, she was not there anymore and not say, no, we do it, we don't do it. To find a way together with the dancers who had worked with her so intensely and so closely um, to, to, to have this document that is now there. And um, I think it's very important and, and everybody loves it. And it's, it's so, um, it's, what, yeah, it's, it's a very important part of the heritage in, in the media and has become a part of the heritage, the, the view of Wim Wenders through the view of the dancers to the, to the choreography, to the work that she did because it's filtered in a way, in, in very many ways, uh, until you have the final result that you, that you see on the, on the screen. And um, yeah, and I mean, we're lucky that we have that from an artist like, like them. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I know, as you were saying, Bettina, about, um, about Pina's um, lack of participation in the film. I think that both Pina and Merce were um, humbled in a way by the work that they created. They always put their work ahead of themselves. And, um, and that has been, I think, extraordinarily helpful in um, maintaining Merce's legacy. It's an opportunity to um, be true to, to the steps in the way that he, he stated them, but also do in a way as you've described, which is allowing other people to take this material and make something new from it. And it's been always really, um, uh, when I was a, um, a trustee, I, it was sort of my pet peeve was to be sure that um, those film documents that we have that were, that involved Mercer's participation were named and quite conveniently those names still stand true and are a, a good identifier and for those works being made post Mercer's lifetime in which another artist whether they're director or editor or choreographer taking the material and creating or generating something and 2020 with that work um, there's a title that comes with that piece as well. And, and if there's a connection made to the original title as a means of reference, that's, that's something. Um, but the title itself is the identifier and it gives us an opportunity to let Mercer's work continue to be explored and, and to live on and to be um, a means of inspiration for an artist working today without it being a matter of destruction of the work um, or not being uh, careful about or caretaking and, and preserving his legacy. So yeah. I, I, I like the question a lot. I think it does apply to, to both artists in a significant way. Merce um, uh, was um, 
uh, quite prolific and making film dances that were dances intended to be filmed and seen through a lens or on a screen rather than a dance that was being made choreographed for live performance on the stage. Mm -hmm. And so we have quite, quite um, a wealth of material um, at the, the Merce Cunningham Trust relative to Merce's film works and the film works that have come since his passing. Yeah. I think that the worst thing you can do uh, to an artist of this quality that as, uh, as Merce or, or Pina is uh, to, t to treat this heritage as something historical and say, you don't touch it, this is the way to... <laughs> because I mean, I have this experience with Schlemmer, you know, I'm, I, I worked with this, with this heritage for long and he has this, this nephew um, who, who, who just tried to make n absolutely nothing possible with his work for, for years. And then we started to do this Bauhaus festival and he was such a creative person, such a courageous person. And I think to do something like that to, to somebody like Pina or to Merce and make them a museum. And it, it's, <clears throat> it's so the, the contrary of what they were because they were so yeah. curious and they wanted to know everything and take everything apart and look what's behind and how it works and you know, how you can make it better and better and not more interesting and more challenging and I think we have to be as courageous as they were and uh, this is what is this is part of the heritage I think to to do them right it's uh, we cannot handle them as a museum or something that's the past and it has to stay the way it is we have to find people to really take the work and and yeah and do something with it and keep it alive Mm -hmm. this, is, this is wonderful. It's, it's wonderful to have this. And I would love to have this as the last sentence that stands. But I would rather love to use the last five minutes, maybe for the two of you, if you have, only if you have, if you, for a last question that you always wanted to ask or that just came to your mind right now. So we have time for um, a final answer or question or... Uh, to maybe to each other or about uh, how you see the future. You can decide how you see the future um, for the company you're, you're working for or a last question to, to the other person. Well, may, may I? Yes, please, Trevor. <laughs> I, I don't know that I have a question um, because I'm still just as curious now to see what happens tomorrow with regard to Pina's work as I was when I was 20 years old studying in college and she was performing at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. It's, there's, there's something about uh, Pina's life's work um, and, and the force field around her work that um, continues to um, invigorate me today. And it's the same thing, although I'm somehow more surprised by it, I am still surprised to see that Merce's work, um, without him here, continues to invigorate and surprise and engage me. Mm -hmm. Um, and the same way it did when, when I saw his first performance at Lincoln Center Out of Doors. Wow. And I think that that's quite extraordinary when we think of um, the art form that these two artists chose to work in, um, which is uh, considered one of the ephemeral art forms, something, you know, you're either there for it or you're not. Um, still today, um, leaves me wanting to see and experience more. And it's not from a sense of loss, but rather mm -hmm. from a sense of um, curiosity. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Bettina. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I'm absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, we have to, um, to, not to, 
to convince the people because we have an audience both most has an audience and pina has an audience still there are these people there are a lot of people who know the work very well we've seen it for years maybe for 10 20 years they they know each piece they have traveled around the world to see all these pieces and uh, that's wonderful on the one hand on the other hand this kind of um, admiration and this kind of success can also be an obstacle in the way to really uh, keep the keep the the quality of the work you know because you you always have to ask the same question that's what pina did you you she always said you 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 shouldn't stop asking that's mm -hmm. the the most important thing and i think for for her pieces maybe even more than for mercer's because mercer's laboratory worked in a different way he would probably be uh, have been very very interested in all the the technological uh, um, development of the contemporary and and you know and not use it all for his work and it would have been fantastic probably in the results he'd found but and for Pina it was this uh, asking for um, yeah how, how do people live what do they do what we what do we do to each other and and what is our our basic uh, um, impulse to 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 be to be alive and i think uh, to keep this is is very very important otherwise the the work really gets lost and um, mm. i think to have a form and also a place where this can happen is very very important and i think it's also for most it would be very important to have maybe really young artists to deal with it or um, the way you do it and uh, and for pina it's the same you have to to um, to realize that the contemporary has its own history now, but it has to be go on being written, you know, and um, and all the people have to have to get involved in it. We have this, you know, we have we have this heritage uh, expression in the classical ballet. They've always talked about it, handled it from one generation to the next. They were always aware this is Petipa's choreography. It has to be kept as pure as possible. Um, and the contemporary, which started in a way, um, if we don't talk about classical uh, form uh, in the 70s, and, and with all these new forms that also Pina created with Tanztheater, um, it's, it, it has a very short history and we have to find our way through it, I think, and find a way to, um, to the means that we can keep it alive with. We were not so experienced with this. It's not just mm. a question from one body to the next or from the, one generation to the next. We have, it's much more complex and much more difficult because it's not so formal anymore uh, as the, the classical uh, ballet. Right. Yes. I think that makes it much more difficult. I'm, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I have to stop <laughs> this. This super interesting <laughs> conversation between the two of you. Um, it is already two past <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it has been wonderful. Thank you so much to Bettina and thank you so much to Trevor. Thank I you. hope, uh, thank you and thanks to our listeners. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and um, keep an eye out uh, for what we do. I hope maybe we can continue with something here on this on this in this field um, maybe this was just a beginning <laughs> thank you so so much thank you thank you thank you all a wonderful day and see but just feel <laughs> thank you for listening and thank you trevor it was nice thank meeting you. Uh, on zoom and uh, have a good time and um, yeah enjoy your yes work. thank you thank you all thank you bettina and petra thank you thank you um, I think